Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. I have found some products that I am truly in love with and I'm so excited to share them with you. I do have a little fan on next to me because it's still so hot in Australia. I know I'm wearing a long sleeve. Boy, am I excited for today's video. I have four products that I am so truly excited about. Products that just make me feel so excited about makeup that I want to discuss today. All these products have gone relatively viral to some degree or another and usually when a product goes viral I don't always agree with it. In fact I probably say more often than not I don't agree with it. So I'm very interested to share these products with you today. I'm sure you've already heard about them but I want to jump on the bandwagon. I would like to discuss them also. So let's get into it. The first product it just went missing. The first product is the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I am in the shade Light 111. Oh my gosh, this is such a good concealer. When I first used it, I was a little bit like, ooh, it's not as much coverage as I would typically go for. So the most amount of coverage concealer that I use is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer, and this is a lot of coverage. So I definitely would put it underneath that. It is relatively on par with coverage with the NARS Radiant Creamy, so still a good amount of coverage. Now, something that I didn't believe people were saying was that it's creaseless. For people to claim that it's creaseless, it would have you would have to not have creases under your eyes. It is the formula in my collection that creases the least, which is so, so beautiful. It wears beautifully, it looks beautifully. It does have a set down, which I think stops that creasing from occurring which I do like to see in a concealer because it means the coverage really holds nice. Uh, I have seen some people say that it clings to dry patches. Now I can't always comment on that because I do not have dry skin and I do not have dry under eyes. Even though I have very difficult under eyes, I have crepey skin, but not dry. I have prematurely aging skin under my eyes, but I wouldn't call it dry. So that's why it's hard for me to assess. I must say I had a little dry patch one day because I had overdone it with some skincare and it did cling to that. So if you are someone who has dry skin, I don't think this would be for you, but everyone else, this is a stunning concealer and I am so glad to have it in my collection. I have a few categories of makeup, so full coverage, medium coverage, light coverage, and I usually like to have an, a holy grail in each category. So for full coverage, it is the Hourglass and for the medium coverage, it is the NARS. So now I have two products in that category and I usually only like to have one holy grail. So it'll be interesting to see how these two fight it out over the next couple months and which one I actually end up leaning for or if I end up just having to love them equally and use them in tandem. So I will post back in a certain amount of time and let you know how I go with that. The next product I, oh, I love it. It's the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. I have the shade Happy and I have the shade Joy. Oh my gosh, these are so pigmented. That's such a beauty guru thing to say, but honestly, one dot is enough, and that is all you need. And I blend it out with a duo fiber blush brush. The shade Joy is just so flattering to my skin tone. These both have a dewy finish. Um, I do end up setting with powder, so it takes away from that dewy finish, but if you were to not set, you would definitely reap the benefits of that dewy finish. The shade Happy is a very trendy um, pink shade at the moment. I've noticed that most blushes that go viral at the moment are falling in this shade of like a pink and I think we can thank Makeup by Ariel and Kylie Jenner for that. I do enjoy both shades a lot, but Joy is definitely my favorite. All these liquid blushes and cream blushes that are coming out, like the NARS one that I did a video on, these allow your blush to last so much longer. So that is the swatches there. These both claim to have a dewy finish and I would somewhat agree with that. They're definitely not as dewy as the Charlotte Tilbury liquid blushes, um, but they definitely still have not much of a set down. However, if you put a powder over the top like I do, they definitely set down beautifully. The other thing I like about these is the price is right. There are 38 or 36 Australian dollars. I'll put the price on the screen here. Plus Sephora Australia seems to have sales like every few weeks. So you could get 10% off or you could use 500 points and get 10% off. Because they are so pigmented, you get a lot of wear time out of them. But also because you have to use such a small amount of product, you actually, I wonder how long it will take me to run out. Probably never. 
because they are so pigmented and use such a small amount of product that the product could last you forever. That is the second product that I think is totally worth the hype and I highly recommend to you. The next product is the Givenchy Pris Libre palette. I hope that's how you say it. I could be massively ruining that. I have the shade 2 which is satin blank and it looks like this and you take the puff out there. I could use that puff, but I don't, and I'm gonna show you what I use in a second. And this is what it looks like. So it has like four quadrants where each one is a different shade, but essentially when you, it's just kind of a bougie thing, you tap it out and it all mixes together anyway. I saw this as another product that was going really viral on TikTok, but I find TikTok to be a place where I'm very um, selective with the advice that I take from there because everything is very early, early days YouTube type stuff where people blindly take sponsorships. They can have filters on there. The quality of the video that's on there also gives the appearance of a filter in itself. But I don't know why I could just tell this product was good. And again, I usually don't fall for luxury makeup. I like high-end makeup, but I, I think luxury is often where you get ripped off. Just my opinion. This, however, oh my gosh. This is what I've been looking for. So can you remember I had a matte face? I wanted matte skin because that's what it looked like. Makeup by Mario did Kim skin like. I looked at it and I looked, that looks pretty matte. Why does it look so matte and so flawless? It turns out it is not matte foundations that are gonna do that for me. It is this powder. This powder makes me look poreless. It makes me look like a china doll. And it does, it makes me look like a filter is following me around. I know those are all massive, massive claims, but trust me, for the amount of money this was, I was being critical, hypercritical, because I was like, this is a lot of money, you better be worth it. Plus I have a, a low opinion of these luxury band brands to begin with. But this honestly, you look at the formula on your skin and it will mattify it. But it doesn't mattify it, make it look crepey, or I found when I was trying out matte products last year that they actually accentuated fine lines, accentuated pores or anything because they actually sunk into them. Whereas this is like a light veil over the top. When you look at the formula, you can see there's still a little bit of luminosity in the formula, which doesn't, you can't see it on your skin, but you can see that you look matte without looking dry and crepey and dusty and crusty. It's such a beautiful formula. I highly recommend it to you. And I hope you can snag on a sale because I didn't. <laughs> I had to pay full price for this because it's actually sold out everywhere in Australia. On top of that, I had to get it shipped from the US. And that is just so expensive. Oh my God, I actually can't believe I did that. But it was worth it. But I hope I don't run out anytime soon. <laughs> okay, my final product is what I actually apply this with, and that is the Beauty Blender Power Pocket. Oh, this is so good. I've had this for a year, and then I saw people using it on TikTok, and I was like, wait a minute, why don't I use that? How this works, I don't know. So it's got a longer, fluffier uh, fiber on it than what a normal makeup puff would have. And what I love about it the most is it no matter how much product I seem to pick up, it never applies too much to my face or to my under eyes or to my skin anywhere, which is some sort of wizardry because I don't like a lot of powder. I'm constantly blowing powder off all my tools because I don't want too much. But this product, I was a bit scared in the beginning because I was like, shit, it picks up a lot of product, but it doesn't apply too much product. It's actually amazing i don't tend to so you can put your fingers inside it or there's this elastic bit that you can put inside it as well but i actually tend to fold mine in half kind of like a normal puff and do that and it is just perfect it's interesting to introduce another tool because I, it doesn't eliminate needing a beauty blender at all a beauty blender i would never use this with wet products so my beauty blender i would still definitely use for wet products Knowing that I'm actually more a brush person more than anything, I still love to have all the different tools in my kit. Um, so I will still use the Beauty Blender and I will still use brushes. But it's particularly, again, for my problematic area, which is my under eyes, this is so good because it's so easy to put too much product under your eyes. And this does not allow me to do that. So I highly recommend the Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff 
to you. And those are four makeup products that I have just absolutely been loving. And I hope if you pick them up, please let me know because they are worth every penny. And yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great week, weekend, wherever you are, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye. Thank you.